CostumeGearWire.com. <laughs>right this is the torque interface which uh, appears to be a little bit cut off on the bottom right now unfortunately I will minimize so hopefully we can see it a little better Uh, one of the first things you'll notice right now when I'm playing with this interface is that this is a vectorized interface uh, meaning that if you change the size of the window to something smaller you don't end up getting any scroll bars that throw any controls off screen or anything like that Um, So you can actually fit this on any sort of laptop screen, uh, a really big plasma screen, anything like that. And uh, any resolution or orientation you choose will still cause all the controls to be visible all at one time. Let's see if I can get this up in here. Uh, We'll just kind of do it like this so you guys can see some of the database at the bottom. Okay. So the way Torque works is basically have two decks, uh, which are just like the uh, turntables or CD players that a uh, traditional DJ would use. Uh, one on the left, one on the right. And there's a database down at the bottom that will uh, allow you to access your entire you know, digital music library on your computer, including your iTunes library. So if you already keep a nice extensive iTunes library collected on your machine, you can actually click on iTunes and you can actually look at all the individual things in your library, including any playlists that you've built. So if you like to you know, build any playlists like hip-hop tracks, trance, anything like that, you can access them directly from here without having to maintain a separate collection within this program. Uh, Clicking on database shows me everything that's in here right now. We can see all the songs. We get additional information like the BPMs for the songs, so I can search for music just based on BPMs alone or even just click on BPM and sort all the music from slowest to fastest, allowing me to easily find what I need to mix into. And I can also type in search parameters to find a song I'd like. So I'll start with craft, and that gives me craft work stuff right there. I'm going to grab a track, drag it over to the deck, and it loads it up and it's ready to play. Okay, Torque is designed to feel comfortable for just about any type of DJ, whether you're used to using uh, CD decks, uh, turntables, or even if you actually started learning on software. Uh, This program can be configured to kind of feel any way you'd like. Uh, Right now I'm kind of using it just uh, software alone. I've got, you know, play, search, uh, loop commands. For example, I can grab a two-bar loop, make it smaller. We can also do manual loop points. And keep things going. We can uh, synchronize to another track. So I'm going to load up another track here on this deck. Click the synchronize button, and now when I hit play, it locks in. So you can hear the other song here. 
So this auto-synchronization allows the DJ to kind of start exploring new things. Instead of having to spend most of his time gently keeping two decks in sync, now he's got more time to start doing things like remix and production and uh, playing with effects and uh, doing more sort of production-oriented things as opposed to just playing back someone else's music. One of the first things we'll look at here is the effect rack section. Each deck has an effect rack that can um, alter the sound before it reaches the internal mixer. We have a library of 10 built-in effects, uh, starting with things like delays, with feedback control. Okay, you can stack up to three effects on a rack at a time, choosing various different effects like filters, So we have high pass and low pass filters, band pass filters, and all of these things can be controlled externally from an external controller, such as the trigger finger. So I could pull up something like a reverse effect. I can reverse the sound without actually reversing playback of the music which is really nice, allows you to do reverse effects before going into choruses or any breakdowns like that without actually playing the music backwards and ending up in the wrong location. Let me pull up the repeat. So with the repeat effect, I can grab loops by turning it on, change the loop size, Refeed new audio into the loop. And with all these effects and things that are available, you can already kind of see that I'm not able to do a whole lot all at once because there are so many parameters available. So one of the unique things we've added to this program is something called snapshots. The way snapshots work is you basically take a picture of the entire interface, every setting you've made, such as how loud the volumes are, what effects you have loaded, uh, key tunings on any of the decks, things like that, and then allow you to recall them instantly with just a single press of a button. So for example, I press a button and now we get this effect. So I can do retuning. Okay, so just instant, instant access to all kinds of various parameters, and you can just continue building a library as long as you want, assign them to various controls, either on the keyboard or on uh, a MIDI controller, for example. I press one button, I bring up an entirely new rack with reverse sounds, delays, Okay, so other things we've got available here, besides effects and nice time compression and retuning on the decks, is we also have a strip here that is a sampler. Right now you can see six cells, but we can scroll all the way over. We actually have 16 cells standing by, ready for you to use. Okay. And we can synchronize all this stuff together using the master tempo. Currently running at 140, so I will set the master tempo to 140 and synchronize this track to it. But I'm going to actually put us back to the beginning of the song so we can try this out. Now you'll find that when using the master tempo, everything synchronizes together. So if I bring out a new drum beat, this loop is now synchronized to the song that's playing. And I can keep layering additional loops.
fun there. But you can also sample the music that you're playing in real time by assigning it to the headphones and shift-clicking record on a loop. It starts recording on the downbeat and stops recording on the downbeat. So now when I play this loop, you can hear that's the section I just sampled and it keeps playing over and over again. So this allows you to actually sample things that you're about to play for your audience, sample things that you just played for your audience and drop them back in on top of your mix, or just have a library of beats and other sound effects ready to go to use at any time. Now I've been driving this thing so far just using uh, MIDI controllers and uh, the mouse, but we can also use time code, control records, and CDs. I've got record up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and engage the time code control within the preferences. A nice preferences page here. Now I can actually drop the needle on a record and control it from vinyl. And of course, moving the needle to a different location causes the song to seek ahead, just like a real record, or back towards the beginning. And right now we are using something called absolute mode, meaning that everywhere I put the needle re represents an absolute location in the music. So if I were to scratch and cause the needle to skip, I end up being in a different location on the song. To prevent that, this option right here switches us into relative mode. So now, it doesn't matter where I put the record, all I'm doing is controlling playback speed. So if I scratch and the needle skips, I don't lose the sound I'm scratching. So this is really good news for those hip hop guys who just scratch like crazy, especially if it's on a, in a dance club with a really shaky floor or something like that that causes a lot of needle skips, they'll never lose the sounds they're working on. And also for those guys, we'll put on another record here. We've got something called Quick Scratch, which basically allows you to take any sample that's loaded in the sampler and immediately replace what you're playing on a deck with that sample. So for example, I hit QS1 and I end up getting the infamous aw sound, which we've all heard before. I would scratch if I could, but I can't. But I'm sure someone out there can already tell how good this will be to use. Because if I hit Quick Scratch 2, I can change to another sound. And as you can see, it continues to loop the sample over and over again. So if you have one particular sound that you like to use, you can just let the record go and you'll stay on that sample. You don't have to keep back queuing and trying to find your sample again. And as soon as you turn off Quick Scratch, you're back into music control here. Okay, and the one last feature here to show you all is a special time code control mode called Amputate. Now when this is active, like Amputate says, you're chopping something off. In this case, I'm going to chop off one of the turntables. Using Amputate mode, I can go out and DJ using just one CD deck or one turntable for control. And I do this simply by clicking vinyl on a deck, and then it becomes under vinyl control. So I'm controlling the left side, which you can't hear right now, but now you can, right? And while the right side continues to freewheel, but if I click vinyl on the right side, now it's under vinyl control, okay, same deck. So what ends up happening is, while you've got one song playing on the left, the one you just mixed in, you can use vinyl to cue up the next song. like that. And as you notice, mom, no headphones. I made the visual is so tight on this program that I'm actually able to beat match without having to listen first. So this is good news for all the DJs who have got pricks in their necks from having to do this so often. Don't have to do it anymore. Just look at the screen and you can see when a track hits ahead or when it falls behind and then just put it back into sync again. One other nice feature about using amputate mode is that you can use auto-synchronization in this mode. If I pull up a song that is not at the same tempo, 
like uh, Africa Shocks, perhaps. Let's put on this deck. As we can see on the right, this song is actually supposed to be 130 BPM, but the song that's playing up above is 140 BPM. So what I'm going to do is turn on the sync button, and you can see now that the tempo has been matched to 140, but I did not have to change the pitch slider on the turntable. So now, we just find the downbeat here. Perfectly synchronized. All I had to do was look and drop it on the right beat, but I'm still under vinyl control. So this is good news for DJs who just don't want to take that much stuff to a gig anymore. You know, why, need, why take two heavy turntables full of stuff when you can actually just take one? All that's possible. Now, a couple other features that this program will do that I'm not going to be able to show you here, but you can all come see me on the side stage here later, uh, is rewire support. This uh, program functions as a rewire slave. So if you pull up a host like uh, Ableton Live or Pro Tools, you can actually take the audio from this program and feed it into channels in that program uh, to record in uh, any of your own scratches or things like that directly into the project. But on top of that, all the transport and uh, tempo information is shared between the two programs. So when, just like the two tracks we're able to synchronize together here, if I were to hit play on a song while this is in rewire mode, these songs will all sync up to everything that's happening in the live project. Even if you change tempo in the live application or in torque, everything will speed up and slow down to match. Meaning that while you're playing music, you can actually be producing new beats, bass lines using virtual instruments in the host application, literally turning yourself into a producer remixer instead of just a DJ in front of your crowd. So that's one of these just like amazing features that you know it just hasn't been able to be done before until now. Uh, and then the last thing uh, that we've got going on here is like iPod searching. Uh, all you have to do is just connect an iPod. Uh, you don't even have to carry your CDs or records around anymore. Just show up to the gig, plug in your iPod, and you can search the whole thing uh, just as if you were uh, you know, all built in on your hard drive. So every DJ just comes up, plugs in their iPod, DJs, and leaves. It's very simple. What's that? Oh, yes. And the last thing is VST support. We were looking at the built-in effect racks up here. Right down here is where the VSTs will go. I'm using a Mac Intel. I don't have any universal binary effects on here yet, but if I did, they would show up in this list, allowing me to use you know, additional compression, uh, any weird sort of free effects that I might find on the internet, like KVR audio or something like that. And on top of that, because VSTs can be kind of sketchy, uh, especially some of the real creative ones that are made by maybe one guy in his bedroom, uh, we've implemented VST Crash Guard. So if you are playing with the VST effect and tweaking like mad and suddenly the thing crashes, it doesn't take down the host application. The VST crashes on its own. You get a red flashing indicator here, meaning that you just need to load a new, S new VST effect or just try reinitializing the one you already had. In all cases, audio is instantly routed around the VST effect, so music never stops for your audience. Very important. Stability. Got to keep it going all the time. So uh, Steve actually has the uh, XP version over here, and so you can actually see some of those VST effects at work next door. And any other uh, questions you guys have, feel free to see me uh, around the corner. I'll be here all weekend. And we also have some amazing Torque t-shirts here for anyone who's interested. Thanks a lot. Have a good damn show.